Homemade pita is like a little bit of culinary magic. If you've never made it, it may seem intimidating, but it's actually quite simple and straightforward. First, we make a slurry of yeast. That starts with one cup of all-purpose flour and two packets of active dry yeast and water at 110 degrees approximately. You want something anywhere between 100 and 120 degrees. That's one cup, by the way. And for sugar, honey, a tablespoon. The sugar adds a little note of sweetness, and it also ensures that the yeast activates. Give it a good whisk till it's smooth and combined. And at this point, it's a very wet mixture. Cover this with plastic wrap and put it in a warm draft free place for about 30 minutes until it's bubbly and doubled in size. Look at this, the magic is already happening. And into this, the remaining ingredients. Three and a half cups of all-purpose flour and one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. This offers a little bit of nuttiness and texture to your pita bread. And you can't forget about salt, a tablespoon of coarse salt. And water, another one and a quarter cups at 110 degrees. And olive oil, a third of a cup, extra virgin. And this all just gets stirred about in the bowl until the dough forms. Okay, now for the fun part, the kneading. Have a clean work surface like this and some bench flour. It's quite a sticky dough, so it will take more flour as you need it. So you can just pour that dough right out. And you'll also want to lightly coat your hands with flour so that the dough does not stick to your hands. Knead this dough until it becomes smooth and elastic and springs back when you press on it. That'll take about 10 minutes. This dough is feeling really good. It's giving me a lot of resistance now, and that tells me that it's about done. So just gather it up into a bowl, press it with your finger. It's springing right back, so that tells me we're good to go. And turn it around into the bowl, lightly coated with oil. That'll prevent any kind of a crust from forming on the dough. This gets covered with plastic wrap again, and back into a warm, draft-free place until it's doubled in volume. That'll take about 45 minutes. Our dough, doubled in volume, and now we're ready for rolling into individual pita rounds. Punch the dough down first to take out that air. And this is gonna go onto a lightly floured work surface. This will yield 16 pita breads. So form it back into a ball. You can use your bench scraper or a knife and quarter the dough in one direction and then in the other direction. And we're gonna be working with one piece at a time. So it's a good idea to keep the rest of the dough covered with a kitchen towel so that it doesn't dry out. And then this first piece of dough goes into four smaller pieces still. There we go. And again, working with one piece of dough at a time, lightly flour your work surface. Form the dough into a ball, pinching it in your hand, and then place the pinch side down on your work surface. And with a lightly floured rolling pin, flatten this into a six inch round. And you should also have a few baking sheets and clean kitchen towels on standby. And then these go onto a baking sheet lightly dusted with cornmeal. The cornmeal will ensure that the dough doesn't stick to the tray and it also gives the pita a nice little bit of a crunch when you eat it. Just like that. And just lightly cover that. I'm going to carry on with the rest of the dough. And then once they're all rolled out, preheat an oven to 500 degrees with a cookie sheet on the very lowest rack of the oven. That's important to help ensure that our pitas puff when they're in the oven. These have rested for 30 minutes. They've risen slightly. They have a nice round shape. And these are ready to go into our very hot 500 degree oven. Close up shop, two minutes. And then we flip them one minute more on the second side. Okay, that's two minutes. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah, see how they're nice and puffed? So just give them a flip, and they need only one minute on the second side to finish up. So don't go anywhere. Okay, these are smelling incredible. They're done, just like that. Three minutes, puffy, gorgeous, homemade pita. Just keep them covered to stay warm and steam and soften as you carry on and cook the rest of your pitas. Our pita is steaming and softening in this basket, and I just have to try one right away. It's so simple steaming warm, and I love this with hummus filled with toasted pine nuts, fresh mint and parsley leaves, and a sprinkling of sumac if you have it. it has a citrusy flavor that's just wonderful with hummus. And this is labna, which is a strained yogurt cheese, very common in the Middle East, and that with a drizzle of olive oil and 
This would make for a very satisfying snack. Happy eating.